Welcome back everyone and happy new year to all of you guys. Today I have another fun project that I'd like to show you, so let's dive right in. Over the Christmas holidays I visited my sister and my brother-in-law and we had a lot of space and power tools where he lives so we decided to work on two laptop trays. The first thing we did was lay out the dimensions so we wanted them to be a bit larger than the ones we're used to because we both have large laptops and we wanted enough space for a mouse surface. We chose some wood that he had laying around and ran it through a jointer slash planer to get all of the parts uh, parallel and to get a nice and flat surface. Next, we cut wooden bars and a few rectangular wooden parts that would later form the support structure for the laptop trays and the plates where we're gonna put our laptops on. After laying all the individual parts out on the floor to check if they fit together, we cut some angled slots in these pieces of wood. These slots will later allow us to have different angle positions for the laptop standing board and um, we're going to build some kind of strut that will slot into these uh, different positions and give us all the different angle options. We wanted to experiment a bit with the joinery on our wooden support structure and also I wanted to try out some of the features of my Shaper Origin. If you don't know what a Shaper Origin is, you can check out my last video where I explain in detail what the machine is capable of. We decided to use dovetail joints that I would mill into the ends of the wooden struts. I cut the female side of the dovetail joint with a special dovetail cutter and uh, the male side was done using the standard 6mm spiral cutter that is shipped with the Shaper Origin. I didn't have my Shaper workstation with me, but I still needed a way to fixate the legs in a way that I could mill on the top side. So I built a small jig that we used with a vise, and that allowed me to just mill on one side, flip the leg around, do the next one, take the next leg, and um, therefore I didn't have to change my grid alignment between cuts but could just go directly into mass production and make all the individual bars for the complete laptop tray support structure. To prevent our laptops from slipping down from the angle surfaces, we added these wooden fencing pieces and they slot into the main board like so and we can just add them to prevent anything from going anywhere it shouldn't. I started out with the joint on this small part using the jig I already used for the dovetail joints on the wooden struts. After that, I cut this slot in the main laptop tray and started taking away tenths of millimeters using the offset feature of Shaper Origin. And that way I could make it so that this part really has a, a firm grip in the slot and isn't too hard or too light to put in and out. Now it was time to create the designs that would be cut into the main laptop tray boards. I made them both in Inkscape 
and I base the design for my laptop tray on the design of my music studio. I have a second YouTube channel where I talk about that, so feel free to stop by there if you're interested in music making and studio technology. The design for the laptop tray for my sister was done a bit differently. We started out by her drawing a flower kind of design with adding onto a white sheet of paper. We then photographed that sheet of paper and digitized her shapes using the trace bitmap feature of Inkscape. I was then able to modify the individual shapes digitally to ensure that I would be able to actually cut them later on. After finishing both of the designs, I loaded them to my Shaper Origin and cut them out using the included 3mm standard bit so that I was able to get into the small ridges and grooves of all of the shapes. We wrapped up our Christmas creativity session by sanding all the parts and by rounding over some of the edges using a router. That gives us a really nice finish for the parts so far and I really like how this looks with uh, the, the rounded edges over here and of course it's not done yet we have to add the legs and the angled plates but I'm stoked to see how this project will turn out when everything is assembled and that's what we're going to do now so yeah let's get started with putting everything together I'm gonna place the hinges uh, where they're supposed to go and mark the holes. Then we're gonna drill some pilot holes so the screw doesn't uh, break out our wood. And then screw them down directly like this. And then we have this kind of mechanism finished. And I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, mouse pad so that it's possible to angle the mouse just a little bit for more uh, a more ergonomical seating position. Next, I'll make some slots to put these angle slot bars in and I'm going to be using a chisel and it's the very first time that I'm working with this tool and also it's probably been sharpened last time like 20 years ago. So uh, let's try if this works and if you notice anything that I can improve about my woodworking and chiseling workflow then please write it in the comments. Well, that doesn't look too bad actually for the first try. So there's three more of these slots to go.
now the hinges are installed and there's one last thing to do before lunch and that is to glue in these angle bars. I'm going to screw them in as well, but I guess the glue will add some additional stability and keep them from flexing too much when they're uh, in position. Two hours later. Okay, we're back from lunch and now it's time to make the mechanism that will allow us to lock the main laptop holding plate into different positions. And I'm going to start by spacing out this uh, hinge here. So I guess it's gonna go around here somewhere. And then I'm, we're gonna cut some, some wood to slot into these ridges over here and to allow us to choose uh, different angles. What I'm trying to do now is to make the hinges flush with the back side of the laptop tray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Shaper Origin to just quick and dirty draw a rectangle um, to uh, pencil drawings that I've made on the wood. So just optically uh, making that cut and uh, make a six millimeter offset where I can place the, the hinges and hopefully they'll be perfectly aligned inside our piece of wood here. I had to move this uh, corner freeing hole a bit to not collide with my design over here. But the hinge fits pretty nicely by itself and it looks pretty pretty flush so we can directly mount the, the wooden piece. Both of the hinging mechanisms are now finished and there's an unintended side effect that I hadn't considered when building and that is if you lift the, the board, gravity automatically pulls the hinging mechanism down and it locks into place by itself. Didn't expect that, but I'm not sad about it either. We've reached the end of the laptop tray project video and I'm quite happy with the result. If you like this type of project then please stick around, we'll be posting more videos such as this one on this YouTube channel. And with that, stay creative and I'll see you in the next video, bye! Muss ich das wieder verschleifen und zuspachteln? Meine Güte, dann misst man es extra ab und das wird nicht gefilmt. First rule of push, you don't talk about push.